Hey guys, um, this is Nirpam from Blue Water Photo uh, and the Underwater Photography Guide. I'm here today with Scott and yeah. Tim from Blue Water Travel. Everyone. Um, now we're going to do kind of a more of a casual talk on Socorro. We're going to show you a presentation and some uh, photos. Um, but to do this, we're actually going to go ahead and go to Facebook Live. Um, so if you give us two seconds, we're going to hook up to Facebook Live. Uh, if you don't want to be live, you can turn your cameras off, you can turn your mics off. Um, and there'll be plenty of time for a Q&A at the end as well. So if you have any questions, you can ask them. And then there's also a chat box right at the bottom where you can uh, write any questions in the chat box. And I'll be sure to interrupt and look at the chat box every now and then. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and go live. So there's just a two second delay. All right, so we are live uh, with our first Blue Water Travel Talk. Um, I'm Nirpum from the Underwater Photography Guide, Blue Water Photo, and I also do trips at Blue Water Travel. Um, I'm with Tim and Scott today from Blue Water Travel. Uh, and what this is, is this is a series over the next, um, well, next few months, we'll see how long it goes, uh, either once every two weeks or once every week, we're gonna talk about a different destination and, um, this week's destination is Socorro. So I'm really excited to talk about that. We've all been there uh, quite a bit. Um, and we're gonna show you guys photos, just our experiences and anything to do with the destination. Uh, at the end, there's time for a Q&A. And if you have any questions at all, make sure you just put them in the comments, uh, send us a message and we'll respond. If you are on Zoom, you can also uh, drop them in the chat box. And um, I also wanted to point out that in future talks, if you want to join us on Zoom, where we have a more informal Q&A, uh, you can do that. There's a sign up link for each of the future talks in our newsletter. Uh, great. So with that, um, I'm going to start a brief presentation on Socorro just to talk about, you know, what the destination is like, um, you know, how to get there and, and the basics. And then we'll just kind of talk about our, our experiences and show some photos. So super informal this time. Um, great. So I'm going to go ahead and share this presentation. All right. Uh, can Scott, can you see this, Tim? Awesome. All right. So, uh, Socorro is kind of known as Mexico's little girl. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just, uh, sharing the the link on my Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, thanks. No, that's great. Um, I, yeah, I saw some head nods there. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's known as uh, Mexico's little Galapagos. And be, similar to Galapagos, it's a set of tiny islands just off the coast, uh, 600 kilometers off of Mexico's west coast. So it is out there. It kind of feels like you're in a, um, a different age, I would say. Uh, there's volcanoes out in the middle of the ocean. Some of them are completely barren from uh, recent eruptions. And it's the habitat, it's the home of ocean giants. I mean, it's the best place in the world or one of the best places in the world to see large ocean animals. Um, all right, so uh, you can see a whole lot of Yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just want to add in that even though it's out there, like in my mind, it's like, the best thing about it is it's so easy to get to from the US and Canada. Like, it's like the shortest trip imaginable to get to Baja and get on the boat. And once you're on the boat, it feels like the dive vacation has begun. So, yeah, it's like, I mean, for me, it's like a two hour flight. Yeah, and yeah. It's 20 minutes from the airport and you're on the boat. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of an oxymoron because it's like, it's so easy to get to, but once you're out there, it really feels like you're out there. And we actually have a slide there kind of showing the route. Um, so yeah, we'll get to like the exact ways to get there um, for anybody that's wondering. Um, now here you can see pretty much anything that you want to see that's big, you can probably see it in Socorro. Uh, so we're talking in a single dive, I've seen tiger sharks, white tips, silver tips, Galapagos, silkies, um, whale sharks. Uh, you can see whales. You can see giant manta rays. They're pretty much the star of the show. There's manta rays all over the place. 
um, tuna, eels, octopus, uh, and actually even nudibranchs. Um, so there is some good macro stuff. There is some good little stuff there, but you, most people never bring a macro lens because you would miss out on everything else that's around you. Um, so to get out there, there are uh, a few liveaboards that go out there. Um, and generally it takes a 24 hour crossing, which is actually really nice because once you get on the boat, you can kind of set up all your gear, all your camera equipment. If you're a photographer, um, you can relax, you can watch the ocean go by and it's kind of nice to have that day to relax after a long flight. Um, and then you're at the island. So the best time to dive uh, is actually in the winter. Um, so a lot of the animals there, they like the colder water, even though it's not that cold. Uh, it does range from 70 to 82 degrees, depending on when you're there. Uh, the beginning of the season is known as whale shark season. So that's from November to January. Whereas the second half of the season is uh, whale season. Um, and that's February and March usually. Uh, so you kind of, no matter what you when you go, you have a chance to see, you know, one big thing or another, one really big thing. Um, and a lot of the dives are a little bit deeper. Uh, I'd say they average about 60, 70, 80 feet. Uh, that's where the big sharks are, but you can kind of choose your depth. And so the dives kind of range 30 to 100 feet and the visibility is fantastic. All right, yeah, there we go. Scott, you want to talk a little bit about your travel experience getting down to Socorro? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, it's it's just any from anywhere in the United States, it's such an easy flight. It's it's pretty quick to get through the airport in, in Cabo San Lucas in, in Baja. A lot of cities fly there direct. And then it's like, you know, you can take a 20 minute cab to the boat or, you know, there's a lot of um, there, you can either stay somewhere near the water, very nice or very inexpensive in either Los Cabos or, or Cabo San Lucas. Um, there's a wide variety of different towns there. And it's it's just such a great overall travel experience. And once you're on the boat, I mean, it's just, you know, you're gonna have dinner and it's overnight, you can have a drink, whatever. So it it doesn't feel like a long, a long journey at all compared to a lot of places that really are taxing and feel like a really long journey. So, um, and you know it's it's um you're going over open ocean you know it can get rough but generally it's it's fairly fairly smooth you know it's it's um it's not that common that you're going through like big storms or huge waves or anything um and if you do just remember to bring uh dramamine or some kind of uh motion sickness medication like that's that's always a good call so yeah, again, that's that's one of its biggest draws is the um, ease of getting to it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, often like the, the whole West Coast, it's really easy. I mean, there's direct flights from Seattle to in Portland, so uh, I love the fact that you can just go right there. Um, now, that is our presentation portion. So what we're really going to do is talk about our experiences and just show a few photos uh, and talk about some of the marine life that you see out there. Yeah. Hey, Nirupam, can you back up a couple slides for a second? Sure, sure. I just want to yeah. make a, a comment on the the accommodations. Um, I mean, the nice thing is there is a, a bunch of liveaboards. The Vortex used to be the nicest liveaboard, but it, it hit a reef and sank. Um, so now I'd say that the Nautilus boats are probably the nicest. And, and there's many other options. Rocio's a... Uh, um, a good option. You have the Valentina, you have the Aggressor, the Solmar are all solid choices. And then um, and then you have the, the Kino, um, which is uh, they have a lot of science advisors on the boat. They do like citizen science presentations and trips. So it's, it's really a great selection of options to get down there. Um, and then can you go to the marine life slide? Yeah. Where you list them all. Um, yeah. And, and the nice thing about, about Socorro is, is like every dive, you have a pretty decent chance of seeing like either a manta ray or shark or both. So 
it's like every dive you're like you're looking for those and then you know one of the other things on the list could also appear but those are like your staples right those are the ones that are making every dive really interesting is that you can see one of several species of sharks or you can see um, manta rays which have a repu reputation of being the friendliest manta rays in the world you know they're not all like that but in, on average they're they're a lot less skittish than most other manta rays and they're they're the huge ones they're like 22 feet across it's just massive it's just unbelievable how how big they are um i'm actually curious i, I from my experience i don't think i've ever been on a dive there without seeing a shark have you guys ever been on a dive there without seeing a shark? <laughs> I'll, I'll let tim answer that one yeah, I don't think I've ever not seen a shark on every, any dive that I've been on in Socorro. <laughs> yeah, they're they're kind of like the fish of Socorro. <laughs> they, they instead of seeing fish, you see sharks. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no. So that's that's our presentation. So let's go to the photos. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen for a second. And I will share some photos. Okay. All right. Um, are you are you able to see this? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Great. So. Um, I started with a photo of just one of the liveaboards to get out there. Uh, I just thought um, it'd be good to show, you know, what the real size is. These are big boats for the most part. Um, so that's why the crossing isn't really that bad because you're not in a tiny little boat. It's a, it's a big liveaboard. Um, and this is a, a boat that we often do for photo workshops, the Rocio. So it has a nice place to kind of sit and watch presentations. And we do, um, uh, it has a good sized camera table and, um, yeah, it's just made made for divers. Um, and I just really like this shot because it, it, it shows how dramatic it can be out there. So I'd say most of the days you get are pretty sunny. I mean, the, the majority of the weather is fairly sunny. You get nice sun balls when you're taking photos down there. Uh, but some days it can get rainy like that and the weather just passes through, but it kind of adds to the drama sometimes. It makes it gives it a different wow. feel. Sometimes when you're down there with the sharks, it's just, you know, kind of dramatic in a way. Um, so I wanted to start out by just talking about those manta rays that, that Scott was uh, talking about. They, they really are friendly. Um, I mean, they see your bubbles and they come right up to you. And that's, that's the only way to get shots like this. Uh, you, you don't chase them around. You don't uh, swim where they're swimming. You basically just sit there and they go from each diver and they'll just do a really close pass by. And you can see the color variance. So there's some really black ones out there and white ones. And I don't really remember if there's any real difference. Do you guys know? I mean, I think they're the same. They're the same species, but I don't know if there's any like reason um, that there's color wars. Yeah, the the um, the white and black ones they are the chevron mantis, um, and the black ones they they're the black moth. So it's kind of a it's it's just a different coloration, but they are the same species. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and you can see here, like, just how big they are. I mean, they're oceanic mantas. They're not like the little mantas that you see in other places. They're big. They're really big. Um, and you can just see the difference. There's a diver down here at the bottom left. And then you see the manta next to it. Um, so it, I believe they can get up to, was it 1,300 pounds? I think something around there. Um, or maybe it was a 13-foot uh wingspan but uh it, it really feels like a big bus is moving at you it's a 29 foot wingspan and uh, up to 2300 kilograms so like over 5,000 pounds i was way off there all right so much yeah. bigger <laughs> thanks scott <laughs> yeah much bigger um so usually once you see your first mantas it's going to be at the boiler or the canyon that's kind of that first island i showed you guys uh then the boats usually go way out into the middle of the ocean, uh, there's a small rock. 
and that rock's called Roca Partida. Some people, it's their favorite dive site. Um, and that rock just goes straight to the bottom. I, I forget how deep it is. Now I'm, I'm thinking maybe my measurements are off, but I thought it was about 700 feet. Um, and there's just tons of life swirling, swirling around, but not much real estate. So that's where you see this really cool situation where you have these white tipped reef sharks that are just piled on top of each other. Um, and it makes for a really unique experience. Yeah, Roca Partida is great because that's where you can have a lot of tuna going by. There's big schools of fish. You can get whale sharks, humpback whales. Um, it's it's, and you can you can sometimes even circum. I think you can circumvent the whole rock in one dive. Is that right? Sometimes. Yeah, I've even done it twice. I think. Yeah. So um, if something appears there, like you're you're probably gonna see it, right? Because it's not like it's some giant island that um so i think that's one of the reasons it's so it's so great yeah i'd say if, if you have a big animal there like one year we had a whale um you're going to see it and it, it's such a small site and it's such a small area that you, you do end up seeing it so if something's there the chances are good and that's the special thing about it i just wanted to show this one because i thought it was like cool you can get really neat black and white photos there. Everything's really dramatic. And then this just shows like, there's always schools of fish there. And often they're kind of in a tornado, uh, but it shows the drama of the reef. I mean, it's, or the rock, I should say. It's just a straight wall going up and down. So if you haven't done a dive like that before, uh, it does take some getting used to. It kind of feels like you're flying. Um, there's really no bottom. It's just the wall for reference and just blue water. and fish as far as you can see. <laughs> so uh, this is something that you can see pretty often on the walls there. Now this is actually at the boiler, but there's lots of lobsters um, and you don't see them as much as you might in the, um, you wouldn't see them as much in the Sea of Cortez, but you see a lot of them in Socorro and that's because there's no fishing pressure. So they're usually pretty big. Uh, and sometimes you'll even see them crawling over the sharks. Uh, I've seen that a few times at Roca Partida where they'll just, crawl over those white tips. Now, moving back from Roca Partida, uh, usually we go to Socorro, and Socorro is kind of like, it, Socorro is what gives the archipelago its name uh, for Americans. In Mexico, it's called the Revilla Jejero Archipelago. But um, after Socorro, which can be an amalgamation of all different types of things, we go back to the canyons, and um, this is kind of a cool spot. So there's a place called the Pinnacle, where uh, sharks go to get cleaned, and they get cleaned by these little fish right here, these angelfish, or butterfly fish, I should say. Um, so you can swim right up to these butterfly fish, and they'll come right up to you, and they'll kind of start to see, you know, do I want to clean this diver? Um, and then that's when the sharks really start coming around. Uh, as long as you stay low, you can get really incredible photos of sharks. Um, oh yeah, Scott, were you gonna say something? Oh, just that, um, you know, just like in the, in the Galapagos where you wanna do a lot of dives, so Wolf and Darwin and Socorro, you don't necessarily need to dive a lot of different sites. I mean, like, I would be perfectly happy diving three sites there over and over again, because every, every dive is different animals. It's not like on a coral reef where the same fish are just there every dive. Um, so yeah, you wanna, you wanna find out where the best life is and dive it as much as your boat will, will let you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually that's how really I like good. to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and actually it kind of changes throughout the day too. So uh, like there's dolphins there um, as well that are really friendly will come right up to you. Um, so usually you see those guys in the morning. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes the sharks are based on the tide, so it really depends. And this is just another view of the sharks at the pinnacles. So from below, they might not look that big in this photo, but you can see here they're pretty, pretty decent sized. Um, especially those Galapagos sharks. Now, this is a silver tip shark. Then um, there's lots of silver tip sharks there. They're probably the most common. But you see an amalgamation, and you also see hammerheads there pretty often too. Um, the hammerheads are a bit deeper. They're at like 100, 100 110 feet, uh, or they'll come up for, for a little bit. 
uh, but you also kind of see them in the distance. So you can get nice silhouette photos of them, but it's really tricky to get like a good shot of one up close. Um, that being said, if you don't have a camera, they're usually pretty close for most people. So um, I have one question here. Okay, so one question is, um, do boats have the freedom to stay at the site for extra days if the action is good? Uh, or is it like the clock goes with a fixed schedule? Um, so yeah, uh, Tim just answered it. Uh, but yeah, they're they're not on a fixed set schedule in Socorro. So often um, if the group says, you know, it's amazing here, you can usually stay. But there are limited spots at each site. So that's kind of a weird thing about it. Um, the boats kind of talk to each other and they decide, okay, we're going to stay here. We're going to stay here. So it's kind of first come, first serve for who gets those spots. But usually there's not too many boats out there anyway. Oh, and there we go. That's all the photos that I had to share. Oh, wait, no, that, that's, that can't be right. I don't think that's right. <laughs> no, there we go. <laughs> so I wanted to end it with the big stuff. Um, so uh, whale sharks, um, You usually you see them in the beginning of the season, uh, but I saw this one actually right in the middle. So if you go around February, which is usually when we do our workshops, um, you have the chance of seeing both whales and whale sharks, uh, and they just come right out of the blue. It's, it's incredible just seeing this dark form just appear out of nowhere. Uh, and you never know where they're going to show up, uh, and you never know when. So it's just keeping your eye out for a dark shape. And they're usually pretty steady. They don't really care about people too much. They're not super intelligent. Uh, one thing I should mention is like whale sharks, they have a tiny brain to body size ratio. Um, manta rays, on the other hand, have the biggest brain to body size ratio of any fish. So you're probably looking at some of the smartest fish in the ocean when you look at the manta rays, but some of the dumbest fish in the ocean when you look at the whale sharks. Um, yes, yeah, Scott? I, I was just gonna say that I I don't think I've ever seen a, a whale shark while scuba diving. And like the main spots for that is Socorro, Galapagos, Cocos, and the Maldives, but people, seem to have really good luck in November. So I'm I'm thinking November for my next Socorro trip, just because it'd be very cool to see a big whale shark. Yeah, yeah, I've heard really good things about Socorro November. I think I wanted Tim's trips. Tim, didn't you have, someone had a photo with a whale shark and a manta and a dolphin all in one frame? Yeah, um, no, um... Early November and early December is the best time to see whale sharks. They're generally always there. I think I've only heard of one trip where they didn't see a whale shark in November. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, um, like Nero Pumps here, it's like, um, you know, you can still see them in January and February. But in general, um, November and December are the best times to see whale sharks. Um, I don't think I've done a trip in November where I have not seen a whale shark. That's awesome. Well, would you say that they're like um, they're mostly juveniles or adults at that time? I've seen I I've seen the biggest whale shark I've ever seen, maybe 30, 40 feet long at, at Socorro. And I've seen juvenile whale sharks that, you know, try to bump divers. Yeah. So, and, and I've seen um, two whale sharks at the same time, even at Tokoro. So the whale sharks are definitely there in November. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I will definitely have to try to do a trip in November. Um, let's see, I've got one question. Uh, oh yeah, so um, how does Socorro vary month to month? Uh, can you see bait balls commonly in May? So um, I, I um, I've been in May and May is supposed to be bait ball season. Um, May also has a huge uh, silky shark migration. Um, although the silky shark migration is really hard to to catch because it it happens for a day and then it's gone. Um, but generally in May there is a lot of life. There's a lot of bait balls and it's a good time to see tuna as well. Um, uh, you know, big yellowfin tuna that that actually come really close to divers. Um, so along with the 
the bigger amount of bait balls or bait fish, um, there's a lot more sharks. The sharks are definitely um, out in mass um, in the May time period, um, around, you know, um, April, May uh, is a good time to see that. The water is starting to get a little bit warmer. Um, so you're still in around like the mid 70s, maybe if you're lucky in the high 70s during that time. Okay. Yeah, I just want to add that I don't think the bait balls are anything that's guaranteed. And I'm not even sure if they're always like right at the dive site, they might be off the dive site, the boat. And Tim, you may know more about this, but the boat may it may be that they need to have a specific plan to go in with these bait balls or look for them. So um, I think that's, if that's something um, that's really important to someone, I think it's something that we would want to clarify with the head dive master on that trip or the potential trip before it's booked. Uh, Tim, I don't know if you've had any experience with that. Yeah, so um, when 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 we talk about bait balls, um, in Socorro, the bait balls are not like the ones, for example, in South Africa during the sardine run. Um, uh, they're different. It, when, when they say bait ball season, it just means there's a lot more fish and a lot more sharks in the area. Um, again, it's not going to be like South Africa during the sardine run where... Um, you know, the, the sharks are hunting the bait balls and, and birds are hunting the bait balls and dolphins are hunting the, the bait balls. Um, in Socorro, it, when we say it's bait ball season, usually it means that there's just a lot of life, a lot of fish um, around that time. Um, would you say that, how, how's the water temperature in November and December? Just... Oh, November, December is... So warm. Um, it's uh, the lowest temperature I've had um, diving in November and December is probably 77. Um, and it's usually about 79, um, 79, 80 um, in November, December. In, uh, it, then it starts to drop when you get to um, February when the uh, humpback will start to come and they go into the low 70s to mid 70s and then it slowly start to climb again um, in April, May, you know, again, you know, around the mid 70s. But in November, December, that is the warmest time of the year, um, high 70s, lo even low 80s. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. So you want to see whale sharks in warm water. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, so let's um, see. The last thing I want to show is the biggest ocean giants that you can see there, uh, which are the whales. And it's not guaranteed, just like the whale sharks. Uh, it's probably less frequent than the whale sharks, um, but it can happen. And humpbacks migrate down to Socorro in the, in the winter. Um, usually around February, March, you start seeing them. Uh, and you'll see them all over the place at the surface. You'll see them um, breaching. You'll see them... Um, blowing spouts and tail slapping but uh sometimes the whales hang out and i know um this last year there was actually a mother and a calf this mother and a calf that was hanging out at roca partida i think for like two weeks i was talking to the dive masters down there so almost everybody who went down there for those two weeks really got to see them um and this one just went to every single person in our group um so first the first group saw it for a few seconds then our group saw it for a few minutes, and then there's a lot of pressure on that third dive master to make sure that he got his group to see him. And the whales came by and spent 10 minutes with the third group in our in our boat. So um, it can happen, and they're really curious too. So they they do approach. Um, I've seen them approach divers on safety stops as well. Uh, so you just kind of never know. Now, one of the cool things about it though is you hear them singing underwater, uh, and if you go around February. I feel like most dives, you hear them singing. Um, and they could be far away, but it's just really incredible to just watch these sharks go by and just hear them singing like that the whole time. 
And then this was just another shot I got of the same uh, mother and calf. Now, what you can see here is they're at Roca Partida. So there's that big wall right there, and it's a tiny little rock. So <laughs> that whale is almost the same length as the rock is wide at that point. Uh, so it's just really dramatic structure to see all this stuff. Have you guys seen whales at Socorro? Um, no, I have not. I knew any February. I have not. Um, yeah. And I I, in some years, they yeah. just have very few sightings underwater. I mean, people will see them sometimes from the boat, but it's it's not that common to see yeah. them in the water. So you were not unheard of, but you were definitely lucky. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely the right place at the right time, and it's the season, and it's less frequent than the um, whale sharks. Yes. Uh, but I think I had one person in my group see four of them on, on that trip, too. So it's just, it's really random. Um, and then, of course, I've, I've been for, you know, times where I didn't see any at all. And that's just a photo of our group on one of our workshops, uh, hanging out afterwards on the way back. So you get a day, day to hang out on the way back and uh, get all that nitrogen out of your system, too, in time to play. Um, awesome. yeah, and that's, that's all the photos I have here. Uh, guys, were there any other experiences you want to talk about that you've had there? Any questions from anyone? Jason, Robert, Rebecca, Jim, you guys have any more questions about Socorro? Guys, have you guys been there or thinking of going? Or... Yeah, this is Bob and Maureen. We went last or two years ago. It was great on our original checkout dive. We had a manta circle on us for 20 minutes, you know, doing on our checkout dive. And I had my the super wide angle lens on there, my fisheye lens, and he was coming so close. I had to swim back because just to fit him all in the, the picture. Mm -hmm. He was like 27 feet. So, yeah, we had a good time. Is your February trip booked full or is there still vacancies? Um, there are still spots in the, for a trip in February. The Rocio one. Yeah. Yep, okay. On the Rocio. And, uh, Mark Heder is the, um, is the, uh, photo instructor on the trip and he's a wonderful guy and a, a really just nice guy and a good photographer. Yeah. We dove with him in the Philippines. Ah, okay. Perfect. Okay, so, you know, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, we're on the Fiji trip next year, so I'm trying to figure out how much vacation days if I can do <laughs> two big trips and a small trip. So <laughs> we got to do the math. Well, the 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 nice thing, like Scott mentioned about Socorro, is you know, unlike you know, going to to like Indonesia, where you know sometimes it takes two days just to fly to Raja. Um, you know, Socorro it takes you know like half a day, and you're on the boat, so you do save some time traveling. Um, and more time on the boat. So that part is really nice. Um, yeah, um, when we went, they had like a camera fee. They were charging people at the airport. They still doing that or did they waive that? <laughs> I yeah, think uh, near from you just went, right? And only only one of the guests had to pay. It was just $50. So they still have it, but it's it's you have to be, you know, only the unlucky people. Yeah, I have, my camera fits in a backpack, and it was it's an Olympus EM1 and Mark II. So he looked at that. Oh, that's a cheaper camera. You can go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it looks expensive, they're a little more inclined to try to get you. But um, usually, what I find is uh, they have a button, and most people, when they press the button, it turns green. But for those people where it turns red, then they do an extra search on your bags. But it helps to to just have normal looking luggage. Um, that way uh, they don't like pull you aside. And usually the Pelican cases are the ones that get to pull aside. But I thought I had them stumped on my last trip. I uh, I had a prototype housing, but they couldn't, uh, they couldn't figure out what the housing was or where it was from. Um, so they ended up taxing me anyway, but uh, that was just for one of my reviews. That's too bad. Any any uh anything else from anyone? Any other questions? I have a question about sneaking up on the white tips. Oh yeah. 
how slowly and carefully do you have to go? Because I was clearly over eager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, it definitely takes some practice. Um, the biggest trick is actually you don't have to sneak up on them. It's you have to hide from them. So in a way, what I usually do is I'll go to that pinnacle and I'll just hide behind a rock. And it, as long as you can't see the white tips, they can't see you. So if you mm -hmm. kind of watch like what direction they're moving um, and you hide behind that rock, uh, eventually if you're in their path, they'll go right over the rock and then they're kind of right on top of you at that point. And that's how you get those photos that I put. But oh, the, um, the sleeping ones in particular are the ones that are just nestling all together, oh, the seven or eight of them. Yeah, yeah. So those guys, when they're sleeping, um, it's, a, it's also kind of the same concept. You just kind of put your head behind your camera. Uh, okay. <laughs> and as long as you don't make eye contact, for some reason that keeps them calm. So if you don't make eye contact, they kind of just stay and hang out. But you, you do okay. want to take it slow and maybe put like a finger down on the rock to, to try to get close. Okay. Just for stabilization. Because it can there can be a lot of waves there too. Yeah. I will say I have never worked harder than I did at Socorro. Yeah, yeah. It can never. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it can have its, its challenging dives and it, it kind of just depends on the tides. Um, so if you are kind of looking, you know, for a trip, sometimes it's good to just try to pick some dates where uh, maybe the tide cycles are half moon instead of like a full moon. Oh, let's see, we got something in our chat. Is there a lot of current? Okay, so that kind of ties into what we were saying. So it's not Galapagos level current. So Galapagos is probably known for having the strongest current where you can see ocean giants, um, but there is current at times. And it, it just kind of depends. I've done trips where, like I said, if you're on that half moon tide cycle, um, we really didn't have much current at all. Uh, but then there can be other trips where you might have a few dives where there's a good amount of current, but the dive guides are really good at figuring out where that current is, where to hide behind the rocks. And then also um, they're all live boats. So if you do get blown off a little bit, um, they'll pick you right up. So it's not really dangerous per se, because you're in a group um, and you've got places to hide and take photos. Uh, it, it can be uncomfortable at times, but not like every dive, I'd say maybe a couple dives a trip. Yeah, I, I, would, I would concur on that. Yeah. Let's see. So, and anyone else? I don't think I see any other, uh, yeah, any other comments on Facebook. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, let, let, I guess let's end it by saying, um, Tim, Scott, what are your guys' favorite experiences that you've had? at Socorro like what was a what was the like the best moment you've experienced you know, for, for me it was a friendly manta encounters for sure I mean at some of the sites if if they can if you're calm they can let you get like inches away for like an extended amount of time it's just it's just the most amazing experience in the world yeah and so I was just getting a glimpse with this huge creature you can actually Spend some time with it. Yeah, I don't think you can get that experience anywhere else. Yeah, I never have. <laughs> uh, Tim, what about you? Um, probably um, when uh, we saw a couple of whale sharks and they just swam around Roca Petita the whole dive. So literally the whole dive, we didn't take pictures of anything else other than whale sharks. Which uh, which was which was really nice, and Will Shucks playing with mantas. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always nice when you're with something a whole dive instead of just a fleeting moment. It's a completely different experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we had a dive where we had quite a few Galapagos and silver tip sharks that were coming around for quite a while, quite a while for most of the dive. So. It wasn't just wasn't just a one off. Yeah, I, I think my favorite moment there was actually a one off. Um, 
which was uh, seeing a tuna get chased by two uh, silver tips. And oh, wow. they were hunting it. And then this tuna turns around and the two whales are right there. The ones from the photos. <laughs> oh, wow. So that was like just you know, a few seconds of everything happening at once. Uh, but it kind of just goes to show, right? Like each of us have entirely different experiences. Yeah. Well, near home, thanks. That was a great, great overview of a fantastic destination. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for joining us. And uh, like I said, if anyone has any questions after this, like make sure you just leave us a comment. Uh, you can send us a message on our Facebook page. And you can also email us at trips at bluewaterdivetravel.com um, and or email us directly. Uh, so Scott's email is scott at bluewaterphotostore.com. Uh, Mine is nearpum at uwphotographyguide.com. And Tim's is tim at bluewaterdivetravel.com. Um, sorry, Nearpum. Can I yeah. just say one other thing? Yeah. Um, yes. And so um, Blue Water Travel, we host photo workshops. And we go to Socorro every year and we have a photo workshop next um, February, February 15th to the 24th. Um, it is on the Rocio Del Mar um, for nine nights. Um, and there are still some spots left. So if anyone is interested in joining us on this photo workshop, um, shoot us an email um, at trips at bluewaterdivetravel.com and we will get you signed up. Yeah, and obviously, if you can't make those dates, we we can um, we we book our guests with the guaranteed lower lowest price on any of the boats. So um, you can go anytime you want. Great. Um, so uh, I think that's it. Just one final question: Are there night dives? And the answer is unfortunately no. Um, I think you know the sharks are <laughs> probably. Probably best not to do that dive with them. So that's when they hunt. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, thanks guys for coming and um, have a great evening. I hope to see you all diving out there at some point. Sounds great. All right. See you guys. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.